Hello boys and girls. The story that I've chosen to read to you today is all about this little character called Mog. Mog is a cat, as you can see. The lady who wrote the stories about Mog is called Judith Kerr. And she wrote lots and lots of books about Mog the cat. I've always liked Mog the cat because a long time ago, I used to have a little cat and I used to think that she perhaps got into mischief a little bit like Mog. Also, my little girls as they grew up loved Mog the cat and I used to read them lots of stories before they went to bed. Now I have a little grandson and he loves Mog too. But his favourite story is this book called Mog's Bad Things. He finds lots of things in this story quite funny. So we'll see if you like it too. Mog's Bad Thing by Judith Kerr. One day, Mog was coming home to her garden. She had been on a mouse hunt all night and she was very tired. Mog thought, I need a big sleep. But first, she went round her garden to see if it was just as she had left it. The grass was still there. The flowers were still there. The tree was still there. And so was her toilet behind the tree. Mog thought, that's all right then. It was starting to rain, so she went into the house. from the pet shop was there with Mr. Thomas. He said, hello, Mog. All ready for the cat show tomorrow? Debbie said, there's going to be a cat show in our garden and you can be in it, Mog. What if it rains? asked Nicky. All the cats will get wet. No, said Mr. Bunce, because I'm going to put up a big tent and the cat show will be inside it. Debbie said, perhaps Mog will win a prize. Mr. Thomas looked at Mog and Mog looked back at him. He said, well, well, you never know. Mog had her breakfast and went to have her big sleep. It was a very big sleep. It was so big that she only woke up after everyone else had gone to bed. Mog thought, now for another mouse hunt. But when she looked out, she had a terrible shock. Her garden had disappeared. The grass had disappeared. The flowers had disappeared. The tree had disappeared, and worst of all, so had her toilet behind the tree. Instead, there in the dark was a big, white, flappy, floppy thing. The flappy, floppy thing moved in the wind. It went flap, flap, flap. It went flop, flop, flop with a loud, flappy noise. Mog thought, I'd better run. And then she thought, oh, but I need the toilet. Suddenly, the flappy, floppy thing flapped right at her. It nearly caught her nose. Mog ran. She ran back into her house. She ran through all the rooms in case the flappy, floppy thing was coming after her. She thought, what shall I do? What shall I do? And then Mog did a very bad thing. She didn't mean to do it, but she did. She did it on Mr. Thomas's chair. And then she hid under the sofa where the flappy floppy thing couldn't get her. She was too upset to think anymore, so she went back to sleep. 
she mm -hmm. woke up in the morning to a great noise. It was a shouting noise, and Mr. Thomas was doing the shouting. He shouted, look what that horrible cat has done in my chair. Where is that horrible cat? Just wait till I find her. Mog did not want Mr. Thomas to find her. When no one was looking, she ran out from under the sofa and out of the room and to the very top of the house. She thought, no one will ever find me here. I'll stay here forever and ever and I'll never ever go downstairs again. She was very sad. But downstairs they were all too busy to think about Mog. Mr Bunce had come to get ready for the cat show. He fixed the hole in the tent where rain was coming through. And then he put out a table for the cats to sit on and the chairs for the cats' people. Debbie said, it's time Mob got ready too. Where is she? No one had seen her. They all shouted, Mog! Where are you, Mog? Mrs. Thomas said, Oh dear, here come the first cats for the cat show. But there was no Mog. They looked in every place they could think of, but still there was no Mog. Debbie said, But we can't start the cat show without Mog. Don't worry, said Mr. Bunce. We expect she'll suddenly appear and she'll surprise us all. There was no time to go on looking for Mog because more cats were arriving. There was the Siamese from round the corner and Blackie from the high street and Ginger from the paper shop and old Mr. Ben's Tommy and Fluffy who had once bitten Mog's ear and Oscar who ate three tins of cat food every day and a whole lot of others. They all went into the big tent. The cats looked at each other and the cats people looked at each other and at each other's cats. There was a prize for the most unusual cat in the show and everyone wondered which cat would win. A lot of with her hiding place. She thought she'd look out of the window. Now the fluffy blocky thing had stopped flapping and it didn't look quite so frightening in the daylight. And there was her tree. It was there. It was still there, Mog thought. I could jump down on the fluffy blocky thing and into my garden. But then she thought, but it might flap at me. And then she thought, shall I? Inside the tent, Mr. Bunce had finished making notes. He said, it's time to choose the winner of the show. We can choose Bertie, who has unusual eyes, or Oscar, who is unusually big and fluffy. Or Min, who is unusually, well, unfurry. Or Mrs. Pussy, who has had a very unusual number of kittens. But something was wrong. Fluffy was getting wet. It was raining on Fluffy. It was raining inside the tent. Oh dear, said Mr. Bunce. It's another hole in the roof. The rain will come through. But then, something more than the rain came through. It was something furry. It was something stripy. Nicky shouted, It's Mog! Well, I 
never, said Mr Bunce, and she's wearing a little dress. I thought Mog might surprise her, but this beats everything. Mog tried to say something, but only a very small noise came out. Meow. Then Mr Bunce said, In this show, we have seen some unusual cats, but none as unusual as Mog. She has flown through the air like a circus cat. She is an abrocat. Um, I mean an acrobat. She has amazed us all and I think the prize for the most unusual cat should go to Mog. Everyone clapped and cheered. Well, almost everyone. Mog got a very special prize and Mr and Mrs Thomas got a certificate. They were very proud. Mr Thomas was so proud that he was no longer cross about his chair. And when everyone had got gone home, Mr Bunce took his tent away again and Mog's garden reappeared. And it was all there, just as before. The grass was there, the flowers were there, the tree was there, and so was her toilet behind the tree. She was very happy. I hope you enjoyed my story all about Mog. We've just read Mog's bad things. This is my little grandson, Rohan. Say hello, Rohan. What was your favourite part in the story? We on the chair. <laughs> Are we on the chair? Shall we say bye-bye now? Bye. -bye now? bye. bye.